four, in four, with that same bait. You guys probably saw it on the FLW team. Sure. She won there, and then kicked off this year on the Bass Master Elite Series at Lake Seminole, and won there. He won over three hundred thousand dollars last year, guys, with one bait. Cost him about three bucks. <laughs> so he's living ahead. He'll buy everybody dinner. She was really nice. He's a six-time Forest Wood Cup qualifier. He's a three-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. He will be fishing the Bassmaster Classic in February. If we hear him Sacramento in May when they make their stop, guys, please welcome the big kid from Phoenix, Arizona. My old buddy, Brett Hyde. Thanks, Ken. Hope everybody can hear me. I appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the warm introduction. Uh, like Kent said, I've, I've been very fortunate. I uh, cut my teeth uh, out of here on the West Coast. I love fishing the West Coast. Grew up fishing Clear Lake, the Delta, um, Havasu, all the Colorado River chain. Obviously, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and I, I really started fishing, uh, really got my career started off fishing, finesse fishing. And, um, you know, when I started fishing back east in about uh, 2001, um, I went back there pretty green and didn't really know what I was doing uh, other than deep clear water reservoir lakes uh, like we have out here. So um, I had to learn how to catch fish a different way and uh, I happened to run into a bait that I won those four tournaments on and I I've won a lot of money on and I'm going to talk to you guys about that first and that's a, a chatter style bait um, or a bladed jig and uh, what what I've realized with this bait here, it looks just like your standard Arky style jig head. It's got a, um, a stainless blade on it, almost like a uh, almost like a crankbait bill on it with a line tie. This is a 3 8 ounce. Um, this one has, uh, I really, really like, my, my preferred color is green pumpkin. I'm really trying to match bluegill, um, uh, you know, maybe a thread, uh, you know, maybe a small carp. But I know everywhere that I go in the whole entire country, uh, bass feed, feed on bl brim and bluegill. And big bass always have a tendency to feed on these baits. So um, both those tournaments that I won this year and when I won here at the Delta and uh, in Florida, I was all, always fishing around submerged vegetation. And this bait, uh, who's, all, who's ever used a rattle trap out in the crowd? Everyone probably used a rattle trap in their life. You feel that vibration like that. Now, rattle trap is very, very well known as a pre, very good pre-spawn bait. For some reason, those fish, during the pre-spawn, before they spawn, they really like that, that hard vibration. And this bait makes a very, very similar vibration when I wind it. As you can see, when I wind it, it just kind of wobbles and vibrates. And what I'm doing is I'm actually putting a swim bait trailer on there. So I'm, I'm using a, this is a pretty big profile bait. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get that big profile during that pre-spawn, which is what's coming up in the next couple months around here. Um, I want to have that big profile bait. Those fish are really feeding on big baits. And I want to, I want to have this thing look just like a bluegill going through the water. So what I'll do, I fish it in all sorts of different kinds of scenarios, but my favorite place to fish it is in aquatic grass. And what I like to do is either get on a grass edge and just wind this thing slow, slow, slow till I feel a piece of grass and I'll jerk it like that. And you see that erratic action that it makes? That's usually when it's gonna trigger the strike. So just wind it down there. Whenever I feel something, I'm gonna kind of give it a, a jerk like that and that's gonna give it that erratic action a natural erratic action and that's usually what anything whether it's a crankbait or a jig or something on the bottom you want it hitting something and by giving that erratic action most of the time that's when you're going to get that bite so i fish this thing um, what's great about this bait is i can count it down let it go to the bottom and fish it along the bottom or i can wind it real real fast and keep it up up close to the surface if I'm fishing aquatic grass in pre-spawn, like on the delta, the grass more than likely is not really going to be topped out unless the tide's way down. Um, so what I can do is I can, if the grass isn't topped out, I'm going to wind this thing slower and keep that rod tip down here in the, you know, real close to the water. 
and get that, that bait down. I want the bait to hit the grass. It has to hit the grass. If it's not hitting the grass, you're not gonna get a bite. So I, I really prefer if you can find good, good, healthy grass. I mean, in any type of grass situation, if you can find good, healthy grass that is green and not dead, that's where the bass are gonna be. be. Most of the time, if you have a whole area where the grass is dead, that it's been real, real cold, um, and the grass is mucky and slimy, that's usually a good scenario that that's probably not the right spot. But if you go down the delta and you come to a spot and the grass is nice and green and it's real, real crisp, you bring up a piece of grass and it looks like it's out of your, out of your yard, like you've been watering it, that's the stuff you want to fish. So a lot of the time I can just run through the delta and actually stop and look at the grass and tell you if I'm going to get a bite or not. But with the chatterbait, it's so, so versatile. Um, a lot of time, like I said, I really, really prefer, especially in these pre-spawn months, to use a big, big profile trailer. This is a Yamamoto. It's a hardtail shad. As you can see, it kind of gives the whole bait a side-to-side -side action, almost just like a bluegill would be swimming through the water. And when, when that thing hits something, it's going to give it that erratic action that makes that, the, the bass trigger and strike. I prefer, you know, there's, a, there's a bajillion different styles of uh, bladed jigs out there right now. I prefer a 3 8 or a half ounce most of the time. Um, one of my big pet peeves is I really, really try to make things simple. Um, as you guys, if you look right behind me, I mean, you go to the tackle wall and you see all those baits and all the worm selections and colors. Um, I really try to make it simple. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. In this bait, I mean, I, I would say uh, uh, this is what I throw a lot. I mean, and I've won a lot of money on it. And I literally only throw two or three colors in this bait. I try not to get too caught up in every little color out there. All you really need to do is you need to have three different colors, a black and blue, some kind of white color, and a green pumpkin. And you can put whatever trailer on it that you want. That's what's really cool about this bait. You don't have to put a swim bait trailer on it. You can put a craw trailer. If you think the fish are eating crawdads, which they do a lot of time in the pre-spawn, put a crawdad trailer on this thing, fish it the same way. Now, when I first won in 98 back-to-back -back tournaments on this, I won, like I said, an aquatic vegetation, fishing hydrilla and milfoil. And I thought, okay, it's only a grass bait. I thought that, you know, that, that's what I'm going to catch them on. I mean, they, they, I, this, this bait only works in aquatic vegetation. I was completely, completely wrong. Throw this bait exactly where everyone's probably thrown a spinner bait in their life. Am I correct? You everyone know what a spinner bait is? Throw it just like you would a spinner bait. It's the exact same thing. The black blade just makes it look a lot more natural. Um, if I'm going to go to a white chatter bait, I'm going to have a silver blade. But I really, really like to throw it. I mean, I, I've caught them in super clear water, like at a place like Lake Shasta, catching spotted bass on it, um, just going down rock banks, just throwing it just like you would a crankbait or a spinner bait and just fishing it in every different condition that you can find. I, I really like it in that aquatic vegetation just because it's so, so weedless. I can throw this in super shallow grass and it won't get hung up like, uh, let's say, a rattle trap will. So I can be a lot more productive, fish a lot shallower grass areas than I can with a rattle trap and uh, by being more productive and not having grass on my bait all the time, oh, by not having grass on the bait all the time, I can catch more fish. And being able to make those perfect casts up there where a lot of people aren't getting, that's going to really, you know, you're going to have a lot better odds. If you're getting the bait to places that other people aren't getting their bait and being able to productively reel that bait in, and make a good presentation, you're going to get more bites. Now again, like I said, 3 eighths or a half ounce green pumpkin, black and blue, 
and a white one. That's the only colors you need. Make it real, real simple. I prefer to throw it on um, a Shimano CI4 Chronarch, somewhere around that, that 6 4 to 1, 6 3 to 1 ratio. So a medium speed reel. Something that I can, I don't want a super fast high speed reel because I don't want to over, over reel the bait when, uh, let's say, like today, I mean, we could go out on the Delta, it's in the middle of the winter, I'm gonna wanna slow roll that thing. So I don't wanna overpower the bait. And then I don't wanna have a, um, you know, a five, like a five to five one gear ratio and underpower the bait. So a medium speed gear ratio. Um, the biggest thing for me, a lot of people have a really bad misconception about this bait. They think it's a jig. So they put it on their, their jig rod. You know, their medium heavy or their heavy action graphite rod. Time out. This, you gotta think of this as a spinner bait or a crank bait. This is a reaction bait. I prefer to throw it on, I do not have my rods here, I flew in today, but I always, always throw this bait on a seven foot three evergreen rod and it's a, a gla fiberglass rod. And why fiberglass? Fiberglass has a very parabolic bend. And I want, when, when the bass bite this bait here, they bite it very, very aggressively. I mean, all the way down their throat. And by doing that, you get a really aggressive bite. And I want the rod to actually load up before um, I actually set the hook. So I'm reeling, reeling, reeling. I feel the bite right there. I'm going to let the rod load up and I'm going to wind till I actually see the rod load up and then I'm going to do a side sweeping hook set. I'm never, you're never going to ever see me set like that over my head with this bait. It's always going to be a side sweeping hook set. But I'm going to always wind, wind, wind till the rod loads up and then I'm going to do a hook, uh, side sweeping hook set. By having that fiberglass rod, I land 98% of the fish that bite this bait. 